Thank you very much uh, for having me. Uh, my background, well, uh, background that's pertinent to the novel is that I was a graduate student at the University of Florida in the late 60s and early 70s, and then later stayed on to teach there until 77. And I met some professors there who had been the victims of the Johns Committee. The Johns Committee was uh, a committee impaneled by the Florida State Legislature to investigate homosexuals, communists, and the NAACP in the state of Florida. Um, the history of the committee is that uh, in 1953, Governor Dan McCarty died suddenly of a heart attack. And at that time, Florida had no uh, lieutenant governor. So the president of the Senate, who was Charlie Johns, Senator Charlie Johns from Stark, Florida, became the governor. Uh, and uh, luckily, he was governor for only one year, but uh, he gave he gave his imprimatur to the to the Johns Committee, the Florida uh, Legislative Investigative Committee, and they set about their their work, which was to to do those investigations, um, and uh, they established and maintained for about a decade uh, an atmosphere of paranoia in in the state of Florida. Um, one of the really shocking things about their activities was, was that they were able to enlist into their network of investigation uh, all sorts of clubs and organizations and even churches. Um, you know, you never know, uh, you never knew uh, who might be watching you and reporting on you to the committee. I recently learned that uh, one anecdote, uh, uh, someone drove by a professor's house and saw women's underwear hanging from the uh, clothesline, reported this to the Johns Committee, and the Johns Committee went after this professor for living in sin, supposedly. Well, it turned out that his mother was visiting him, and, and those were her those were her bloomers. Um, <laughs> but, but that's an overview of the committee. Now, I'll, I'll say one more thing. Uh, you asked me why I wrote the book. Um, Stephen King was recently interviewed and asked why he wrote about dark subjects and scary things. And he said, what makes you think I have a choice? And um, I never really had a choice. I didn't. Uh, it took me 40 years to get around to writing the book, but I I always knew I would. And so really the subject, uh, the subject chose me rather than, than me choosing the subject. 
I want to insert a little bit here for you and tell you uh, part of my fascination with reading the book. Uh, having my in, uh, and show you, I got to show you a little bit of my history here. I lived 14 years outside the United States. Eight years of that was living and working in the Middle East under under the Islamic uh, uh, rule and under a, a re, under the religious state. And there, we Christianity was banned. And uh, and as it also as an LGBT person, uh, it was in doubly bad because if if I had been outed or something or had tried to live who I really was, I could have been put to death. Obviously, because we were under Sharia law. So having the Johns Committee here in Florida, people can easily identify that. I'm sure people of color can identify with this, and people who are not of the right political persuasion probably can identify with it as well. And again, yeah. it's yeah. It's, it's, it boils out of ignorance and, and usually low education, but sometimes out of paranoia and fear. And uh, it was fascinating reading what some of these uh, uh, people went through there at the at, uh, University of Florida in Gainesville and, and what yes. happened there, yes. I, even though if, if, I guess it's supposed to be fiction, but I'm sure part of it, it could be very close to the truth. And um, That's right. That's right. Uh, so the, well, uh, uh, one of the things the – excuse me, go ahead. No, no, I want you to go – Yeah, I'm just trying to lead you into your uh, – asking you what – describe more of the book there for us. Well, one of the things the committee was able to do successfully for a while was equate communism with homosexuality. Um, and oh, my God. Uh, they, they basically – made the made the uh, assertion that if you were gay you were a communist and if you were communist you were gay uh and it was clever and it worked for a while and uh it is remarkable terrible and remarkable that uh even long after the house on american activities committee on the national scene was basically shamed into silence uh, the johns committee continued in the state of florida didn't really end until 1965 Yeah, the uh, or, or you said sixty five. Did you mean a later date? I thought you said he that the governor was in seventy three. Is that correct, or Johns? No, no, uh, no. I didn't. Uh, he uh, Johns was governor for only one year. Okay. Uh, he he assumed uh, a year of the of the of the term of of uh, Dan McCarty, and okay. then ran for reelection and was not and was not retained in the office. Okay. But the committee, he went. Uh, Johns went back to the Senate, and you know he had tremendous power there in the Senate. And the committee continued under his uh, under his direction for those many years. Okay, I understand, I understand now. Okay, um, some of the people that you write about in there, you know, uh, the uh, Stahl, who's one of the main characters in there, you know it. Uh, it, he goes through some interesting things, and of course, I'm not going to give away the ending of the book. It wasn't quite what I expected, but it. Uh, so, but I, people read the book and they can they can see what the ending is. But uh, the ending mm-hmm. was it was it was interesting. Um, when you were writing the book, you said you knew some of the people there, and and did uh, did you have trouble uh, sometimes? You know, trying to put the pieces together as how the people would react under certain conditions. I know a lot of it rang, rang true for me uh, as, as being able to see the people, how they would react, and some of the people trying to be uh, so anti-LGBT. Of course, that was, wasn't what it was called then, but so yeah. be certain that their masculinity was not questioned or anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, as a writer, you have to you have to sort of, project your your imagination into the lives of, of people different from you and I might even say that um, one one is successful as a writer to the extent that one can do that but you know there, there have to be limits there there are there are things and people that I, I couldn't realistically imagine so I gave myself some uh, some self-imposed limits um, you know on on what I what I was and was not allowed to to imagine so so the book uh, the story is observed through the consciousness of a straight white man uh, and he gets closer to the lives of of gay men than um, he ever imagined he would and he crosses over a lot of territory in terms of sympathy and understanding for 
who and what they are. Uh, at least I hope that's what uh, readers will will take from the book, or one of the things they'll take from the book. That's what I finally got through to me in the book, because if I, for a long time I was reading, I kept thinking he's this the uh, this stall is a subconsciously gay himself and doesn't realize it or something is trying to suppress it or whatever. But as you read mm-hmm. through it, you know it, it comes the other parts of this come through, you know, and but right. and the the ending of the book though was was not what I expected. Uh, it, it, it was it was positive in some ways and negative in some 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 ways too. But it, it was a great great yeah. read. Uh, the uh, and and I could certainly picture the committee acting this way. Uh, I was disappointed in some of the stuff that Stahl did when because I thought you know how could he betray his friends like this and do this you know and then when his wife left him you know I don't want to give too much of the book away but you know some mm-hmm. of the things like this happened you know and. Then mm-hmm. uh, his his own reactions and so forth. There, uh, is there mm-hmm. any other uh, uh, work like this that, that the committee that you're thinking about for the future or something or something else that you would want to delve into in this area? Not in this area, uh, no. I've, I've, all of my books are set in Florida and they're all set in uh, North Florida, you know, in Gainesville or further north. Uh, most of most of the fiction that's being written in Florida now is 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 South Florida fiction. So, I've I've been a kind of an outlier in that way, and uh, uh, I'll I'll continue to, you know, to write about North Florida as a region. I've always been um, enchanted by the by the landscape, even though a lot of people find it boring. I don't. I I think it's a wonderful landscape. A landscape and the people. It's sort of southern and sort of not southern. It's a, it's a it's a mixture of things Floridian and things maybe you know Mississippian. <laughs> right. Uh, but that's always fascinated me. But no, I don't have I don't have any specific story in mind at this at this moment that would be uh, that would resemble the story of the Johns Committee. When when you were researching to write this and anything, uh, did you have Specific characters that you wanted. To, I'm, well, I'm guessing you must have because you put the characters in there. But did you have any preconditioned uh, ideas that that uh, led you to change in your mind on subjects, or led you to be more enlightened on something that that you did not know when you started researching to do the book? And and I guess I know it's based on some of the experiences back at U of, U of F. So yeah, it is. Well. Uh... Every book for every writer is a journey of discovery. You discover things in yourself, and you discover basically you discover the story. Very few writers uh, have the story, you know, all planned out before they begin. Um, I think that's probably a statement that would surprise a lot of readers, but it's true. I know it to be true because I've had so many conversations with writers about uh, about how books get written. Um, I guess, you know, the main surprise for me was that I was able to uh, include so many different levels of society and types of people from the top. The top would be the president of the university, the fictional president of the university, and the bottom would be, uh, you know, people who work in, in blue-collar jobs. Uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't done that much uh or written a book with that much scope, we call it scope uh, before. But uh, the feedback I'm getting suggests that I was I was pretty successful in in doing that. I think the university president is a fascinating character. Uh, fascinated me. Uh, right, he's, and he's at the crossroads. Yes, go ahead. No, that that's what I was saying. You know, I I some of the, maybe I missed it when I was reading through the book though. But there, when he he had the. the this compromising data on people, and he wasn't going to use it, or he was going to use it. Am I correct? Uh, what was what was that what was that situation with him? Well, at the end of the story, you know, the reader doesn't know, uh, and and the main character Stahl doesn't know what the president will do with the compromising information. You know, right. Stahl gets that's what my, my my point is, and and and, and, and you, I guess yes, you, you left it that way deliberately. <laughs> oh yes, I did. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was fascinating. The uh go ahead and describe a little bit more about what